Welcome to SCOTUScast, a project of the Federalist Society for Law and Public Policy Studies. Our contributors join us from around the country to bring you expert commentary on U.S. Supreme Court cases as they are argued and decisions are issued. The Federalist Society takes no position on particular legal or public policy issues. All expressions of opinion are those of the speaker. Thank you for joining us for this post-argument episode of SCOTUScast, Registration and Copyright Infringement Actions Edition. I'm your host, Bridget Flaherty. On January 8, 2019, the Supreme Court heard argument in Fourth Estate Public Benefit Corps versus WallStreet.com, a case considering whether a copyright owner may sue for infringement in federal court after applying for registration of the copyright, or whether the registration of copyrights must first act on the application. Fourth Estate Public Benefit Corps is an online news organization that licenses articles to different websites but retains the copyright to those articles. WallStreet.com and Fourth Estate entered into a license agreement for a number of articles written by Fourth Estate. As part of the agreement, Wall Street was required to remove all Fourth Estate content from its website before canceling its account. When Wall Street canceled its account but continued to display Fourth Estate articles, Fourth Estate filed suit for copyright infringement against Wall Street and its owner in federal district court. The defendants moved to dismiss, arguing that the Copyright Act permits an infringement suit only after the Registrar of Copyrights approves or denies an application to register the copyright at issue. Here, Fourth Estate alleges that it had filed applications with the Registrar, but did not indicate whether any application had been acted upon. The district court agreed with the defendants and dismissed Fourth Estate's complaint without prejudice. On appeal, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit affirmed that judgment. Noting a circuit split on whether the ability to file an infringement suit turns on application by the copyright owner, the application approach, or the making of a decision on the application by the Registrar of Copyrights, the registration approach, the 11th Circuit adhered to the registration approach. The Supreme Court granted argument to address the circuit split regarding whether the registration of copyright claim has been made and within the meaning of Title 17 of the United States Code, Subsection 411A, when the copyright holder delivers the required application, deposit, and fee to the copyright office, as the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth and Ninth Circuit have held, or only once the copyright office acts on that application, as the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Tenth and, in the decision below, the Eleventh Circuit have held. And now, to discuss the case, we have Brian Fry, Associate Professor of Law at University of Kentucky College of Law. In Fourth Estate Public Benefit Corporation v. WallStreet.com, the Supreme Court will decide whether copyright registration occurs when a copyright owner files a registration application or when the Copyright Office acts on the application. This may sound like an especially esoteric question, but it is very important to some copyright owners because it determines whether they can file a copyright infringement action right away or have to wait up to a year while the Copyright Office considers their application. The Copyright Act provides that United States copyright owners may file an infringement action only if, quote, registration of the copyright claim has been made. The circuits are divided on the meaning of this phrase. The Fifth and Ninth Circuits have held that registration has been made when the copyright owner files a registration application. But the Tenth and Eleventh Circuits have held that registration has been made only when the Copyright Office has registered or refused to register the work. Among other things, Fourth Estate produces news articles, which it licenses for publication. WallStreet.com is a financial news website which purchased a license from Fourth Estate and published many of Fourth Estate's articles. Later, WallStreet.com canceled the license but didn't remove the articles from its website. Fourth Estate filed a registration application for the articles, then immediately filed an infringement action in the Southern District of Florida. The district court granted WallStreet.com's motion to dismiss on the ground that the Copyright Office had not yet acted on the application, and the 11th Circuit affirmed. Fourth Estate filed a petition for certiorari, which the Supreme Court granted. Under the Copyright Act of 1976, registration is not necessary for copyright ownership. Copyright vests in the author of an original work of authorship as soon as the work is fixed in a tangible medium. But... The Copyright Act provides that copyright owners cannot file an infringement action unless and until their work is registered with the Copyright Office. Some copyright owners register their works immediately upon creation. Some even pre-register their works before they even exist. But many do not register, especially if they create many works, like news organizations and photographers. Instead, they wait until a work is infringed, 
and then file a registration application. The problem is that it can take the Copyright Office a long time to act, up to six months to a year or more, resulting in a significant delay in litigation. Fourth Estate argued that the most natural reading of the registration requirement, in light of the text of the Copyright Act, is that registration occurs when a registration application is filed. But they also argued that it is unfair to make United States copyright owners wait for the Copyright Office, especially because foreign copyright owners don't have to register at all. WallStreet.com responded that the plain language of the statute provides that registration has been made only when the Copyright Office acts on a registration application. Specifically, they pointed out that the following sentence provides that if, quote, registration has been refused, the applicant is entitled to institute suit. The Supreme Court heard oral argument in Fourth Estate v. WallStreet.com on January 8, 2019. Based on the oral argument, it seems very likely that the Supreme Court will affirm, possibly by a large majority. Some of the justices seemed sympathetic to Fourth Estate's argument that forcing copyright owners to wait for the Copyright Office is unfair. Well, maybe the, the bigger heartburn, if we have any, about the policy here is that if I'm persuaded of one thing. It's that Congress uh, pretty much assumed that registration decisions would happen promptly when it enacted the statute, and that there's at least some evidence that that, that, that hope or expectation has not exactly materialized. Um, and and I, I take that to be the underlying plea from the other side, really. What, what do you say to that? But most seem to find WallStreet.com's textualist argument compelling. I understand some of the policy arguments that you have on your side. But, I mean, the question is whether the text can, can, um, can be looked at that way. And I'll just go back to where the Chief Justice started, which is this passage in 411A. And you have these two sentences, and the first sentence is, registration has been made, and the second sentence is registration has been refused, and they're connected by a however. So, you know, to me, you have these two sentences. They're in total proximity. They're both framed in the passive voice. Registration has been refused. Is clearly registration has been refused by the register, not by the holder. And so it seems, um, you know, the only way to read this is that the registration has been made is by the register, too. It remains to be seen whether the court will decide Fourth Estate v. Wall Street on purely textualist grounds or whether it will also opine on the policy behind copyright registration. In an article I co-authored with Nicole Pottinger, Registration is Fundamental, we observe that federal courts often apply a form of skidmore deference to the expertise of the Copyright Office on the registrability of a work of authorship, accepting its conclusions if they are persuasive. In fact, Justices Ginsburg and Thomas did just that in 1991, when they both still sat on the D.C. Circuit in the case Odds On Product v. Oman. In my opinion, it would be a shame to allow suit immediately upon filing a registration application because it would strongly discourage registration, depriving the public of notice and the courts of the expertise of the Copyright Office. Thank you for listening to this episode of SCOTUScast. SCOTUScast is a project of the Federalist Society, a not-for-profit educational organization of conservative and libertarian law students, law professors, and lawyers, founded upon the principles that the state exists to preserve freedom, that the separation of governmental powers is central to our Constitution, and that it is emphatically the province and duty of the judiciary to say what the law is, not what it should be. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast series, including SCOTUScast and Practice Group Podcasts, on iTunes or Google Play. For an archive of past podcasts, as well as audio and video of past Federalist Society events, please visit our website at fedsoc.org slash multimedia. That's F-E-D-S-O-C dot org slash multimedia. This has been a FedSoc audio production. 